Imagine a ballroom. There are couples looking for partners. There are family members looking from the sides. The band is about to strike up. The dancing is about to begin. The characters in a book may be sharply focused on their own interests, but the necessities of the plot and the complexity of the story, especially when that story has an historical context, demands a wider view. That can make it impossible to stay focused on a single or even a small number of characters for too long. They are like the dancers and the guests. We need to see the effect of the story on more than a small few, but we cannot take it in everybody. Circles of Deceit had exactly this problem, and it was not an easy problem to solve. In the end, I changed point of view between different characters to enable the reader to see how the events were affecting them differently. The rule was that different characters had details of mannerism, speech and idiosyncrasies that would make them easy to identify. Take the example of Angel, the oldest of the clerks in the Leavington Mill office. Angel often inserts whistles and other verbal tics into his speech. This enhances a comic aspect to his character, as well as making it easy for the reader to know where they are, both in terms of geography, as well as in terms of the progress of the story. Other characters, such as the assassin known as the Sneaker, need space to show how they think. Um, this was done by using devoted short chapters with backstory combined with observation of the events as they had been seen by the character. In the case of Rosemary Hopgood, she expresses her feelings and observations in her letters to her friend Cynthia. Josiah Ainsco and Diane Burrell are the central characters of Circles of Deceit. They are quite a lot of other characters, from Sneaker to Sir Granchester Smythe, or Colonel Wimes, or Michael O'Connor and his wife, to challenge them in importance. But the slow-burning emotional centre of the plot is the development of the relationship between Diane and Josiah. I created Josiah Rainsco in one of the first books I finished. It was called 1720S and it was a children YA science fiction book about a time-travelling mobile phone. It was not a success in any sense, but there was one episode set in the Victorian Britain where I invented Constable Josiah Rainsco and I liked him and when I started on the first of the Victorian murder mysteries I broadened him out and gave him a detailed backstory and made him my protagonist. The comments about Josiah show how much the bloggers liked him and like him. Readers trust him, they find him good, reliable, modest, principled. When I put him into Children of Fire I worried his background would make him too goody-goody, but I was wrong. In circles of deceit, readers seem to identify with him. 
In Circles of Deceit, he is matched by a powerful female lead. Diane Borrell is her own woman, a strong trade unionist, a free thinker. She matches Josiah in conscience and action. In all the drama of the book, if it works, it is because at the centre of the books is the relationship between Diane and Josiah. With so many dancers on the stage, there's bound to be some collisions, even if the central characters dance unimpeded. But in circles of deceit, everyone gets more or less jostled. Take Fred Sowerby and his wife Hepzibah. They are staunch trade unionists, total abstainers and signers of the pledge, in a time when it was said that the quickest way out of Manchester was a glass of gin. They have an extended family that includes weavers as well as hatters, so even if there is a dispute in one trade, it's unlikely that the other trade will be depressed or turned out. They manage to keep their children out of the factories until they have learned to read and write. They support the charter. So when Fred is found dead in the River Mersey, it seems that sudden death is a hazard that even the best organised citizens can fall prey to in Victoria, Manchester. Accidental drowning is not unknown in the Mersey. Cholera carries off the good as well as those of lesser moral fibre. Death in childbirth or miscarriage or infant death is all part of the vicious tapestry of life in Cottonopolis. The death of infants is so common it is considered part of normal life. But the devastating effect that the death of Fred has on Hepzibah is especially heartfelt by Josiah. <laughs> 